Hello again, thanks for joining me. I'm going to discuss the background of the chart today. It's really important and it needs to be properly understood. This is a chart of Macquarie Group, a daily chart. We'll go right back to 2008. Macquarie Group's a very large liquid market in the Australian Stock Exchange. It really covers all sides of the market, the speculative retail, sophisticated retail, passive professional investors and active professional investors. It's a really large market and today's discussion really covers more large liquid markets. It doesn't matter whether they're small micro cap stocks right up to Macquarie Group and stocks of that type or futures markets, any large liquid markets. The background of a stock or a background of a chart is the last significant buying or selling event on the chart. Now you can see up here, this was some form of minor selling event. And what happened in response was a downtrend established. Now, it may not be quite clear to see straight away, so we'll just quickly go through this. Whenever you see a widespread up bar on relatively high volume or high volume, you should always be wary that that contains selling. It may not, it may be pure buying and the stock's gonna to go to the moon. But just as often, you'll find that a widespread up bar and high volume contains selling. Now in this case, look at the next bar, it was lower. And the next bar, well the next two bars were lower in response. This isn't what happens when you see a widespread up bar that's full of buying. I would suggest whenever you see a widespread up bar or up bars, you mark the low of the bar, and mark the true range low, which is from the previous close. You can see there's a slight gap up off the low there. Mark the true range low and watch the response. If the market consolidates within the range of the widespread up bar and then continues higher, all well and good. If the market breaks below the true range low of the widespread up bar, or if there's multiple widespread up bars in a row, the lowest price of the series of up bars. You can see here this bar here, it's effectively your breakdown bar. Here was where price had closed the previous day. It had been trying to hold on, trying to hold on within the range of this bar. Uh, it was below the low, but it wasn't significantly below. It hadn't clearly broken down, but this bar here, price broke down. And then the next bar confirmed it by being lower. And then the following bar tried to go up and there was no power there. There was no demand. And you knew that it was pretty much all over at that point. And there was a good chance that a negative influence had taken over the market. And that would probably establish into a downtrend which is what happened. Okay, let's clear that and we'll get going again. So anytime you see a widespread up bar, before you just consider it all buying, think about it and put in some measuring like this, just to see what happens and how you can determine whether it really is positive or not. Now, when you have a significant buying or selling event on the chart in a market, that's large and liquid. Uh, Macquarie Group is so big, there are even specialists uh, in the market who specialize in trading Macquarie Group. It's their primary focus, there's no doubt. Now, when you see an event like this, this is what is the, back, the current background of the chart. In this case, it's a selling event, also known as weakness in the background. Once an influence in the market becomes established like this, it can develop into a downtrend. Uh, this is a negative influence. It's a selling event, also known as weakness. That can establish into a negative influence. 
and a negative influence can develop into a downtrend. Now, when you see a market that's trending lower, you expect to see increasing spreads to the downside and increasing volumes down here to the upside. And when you see a up bar in response, it'll generally have a narrow spread and low volume. So there is a lack of demand in the market. Now, that's the textbook perfect description. Markets aren't textbook perfect. In the real world, stuff happens. Uh, so you won't always get a perfect response all of the time. But in general, you expect in a market with a negative influence to have expanding ranges to the downside and contracting ranges to the upside. You expect expanding volume to the downside and contracting volume to the upside. Effectively, you're saying price is finding it easier to move lower because there's more sellers in the market and price is finding it more difficult to move higher because there's less buyers in the market. And you'll see a series of down bars all in a row because it's easier. When you get up bars, they generally don't make much ground higher or if they do, they have narrower spreads and higher volumes, which means they're full of selling. Because if they were full of buying, they wouldn't have a narrow spread like this. If they were full of buying, they wouldn't have a narrow spread like that on volume that's really quite high. They would have a much wider volume. The reason that the spread is more narrow is because it's facing selling pressure and the buyers in there are being absorbed by the sellers. And price will continue down with expanding spreads and volumes and whenever the price tries to go higher, it doesn't make much ground when it moves higher. And volumes down here are reducing as price tries to rise because there's no buyers in the market. And price will continue lower in sort of like a cascade or a domino effect. What you find is sellers come into the market their selling pressure creates more pain for existing holders. It's a, hu it's a normal human emotion to hold on and not take a loss. So holders will continue holding despite being underwater in the hope that price will rebound. And market professionals understand this and they will keep exerting pressure, not on you individually, but they'll exert pressure on the market as a whole. And if you're a holder in the market and you're long and the market's under a negative influence, eventually you'll be under pressure too. And you'll find it difficult to, to take the pain. And eventually you may sell as well. So if you are long, you see a negative influence develop and you're not in there for the long term, no matter what, take take notice quickly and decisively. Or if there's some sort of anomaly occur, some sort of good news event in this case, and price moves higher like here, take advantage of it because it won't last very long. Only, well, this one was three days. You can see price tries to rise here, but you didn't get much benefit, just went sideways within the range of this high volume bar here, high volume within this range. Then it broke down again here. But eventually what will happen, let's clear all that off. Eventually what will happen, the active uh, professionals, they'll see value again and they'll come in and start to buy the market. And here is your classic case. You've got increased spread, mid bar close, much higher volume than has been seen for a long time. The next bar, if you weren't sure there, and you wouldn't have been at the time, but you would have sat up and taken notice. Uh, the next bar, very narrow spread down bar, very high volume, even higher than the previous bar, which has made you sit up and take notice. That was buying absolutely for sure. Now, this bar here would have been questionable at the time. You wouldn't have known. It's gapped down from the previous close, volumes even higher again. You wouldn't know whether it's going to continue lower. It's closed below the low of that initial bar. It would have been a real concern. 
this has turned out to be a massive shakeout because the very next bar was a buy the offer bar on high volume. What's happened there, it's probably been shorted lower deliberately, immediately covered. They're not shorting it to hold it and make a profit. They're shorting it to push the price lower in one quick swift move, which is why the volume is very high because those short positions were probably immediately covered on the same day. But at the same time, the offer was rebuilt by anyone in the market who was thinking of selling but didn't want to take the extreme low prices. So they've set their price a little bit higher and the, the buyers have come in and they've bought the offer straight up over three days here. Um, each of these bars was some form of that one event buying the offer. Now let's clear that again so we don't get too confused. Um, so this bar here was the initial bar where price accelerated lower and we think buying has come in. So as usual, we mark the high or the previous close of that bar. I don't know about that little tail up there. I prefer the, the, the previous close if I can, um, but it's, you can mark both or whichever suits you. It's one of those two. There's a little zone there, you might say. That's the level where if price gets back above it, we'll consider everything to be positive again, or we'll consider the market has become positive again. Now, this is a buying event. There was buying in this bar, at least up to this level. There was buying in this bar for sure. This is part of a shakeout. This is the other half of the shakeout. And this is the momentum that followed the shakeout. You can see price has moved up to where we've marked. Then it's come back to test the market for supply. And you can see that supply is still reasonable. But then there was no demand for a couple of days and prices moved higher again here on increased volume and then a test for supply and wouldn't you know it volume is very low there's no sellers in the market anymore anyone who was going to sell has more than likely done so the professional buyers have moved in and in response price breaks out now this event as a whole is a significant event. You can see it with the high volumes. You can understand what's happened. This is an accumulation and that will put strength in the background of the chart. You had weakness back up here when a selling event came in, signified by this widespread up bar on fairly high volume. And now you've got strength in the background of the chart. When you've got strength in the background of the chart, it's the exact mirror image opposite to what we saw when price was moving lower over here. You now expect to see expanding price range and volumes on the up bars and contracting range and volume on the down bars. And the exact opposite is happening. You would expect to see price finding it easier to move higher and harder to move lower. It's easier to move higher because there's more buyers in the market and less sellers. So a small amount of buying pushes price higher with ease and there's less sellers in the market and more buyers. So when price tries to consolidate like this, the spreads or ranges are narrower and the volume is lower. Generally, you'll find that the market buys any sellers that come into the market um, they absorb them and that's because you've got professional active speculators that have taken positions down at the bottom here and they're supporting their buying they're supporting their positions so when selling comes in uh, they're happy to absorb that selling they're effectively buying it themselves and protecting their positions if something really bad happens they'll have to go down with the market as well but they'll generally support their positions where possible. Uh, one more thing to note down here I should have mentioned. I'll clear that. I'll mark this again. At this point, before price is broken out, so up to here, 
the buyers, while they've built a position, they're not committed to their position yet. This is why you shouldn't buy in the accumulation zone. Uh, unless you're nimble and ready to sell, don't fall in love with your position yet. Because if sentiment changes for whatever reason, those buyers, the active professional buyers, will sell their positions. They'll sell their positions for sure and the sentiment from up here, the sentiment from up here will continue. There's no doubt about it. But once the markup begins, price breaks out and the markup begins, the higher price moves, the more committed to their positions they become and the more they'll support their positions against down bars in the market because they've got profits on the table then and they, they want to support those positions and bank those profits at some point in the future. But down here, when they're just establishing their positions, they're not committed to their positions. If something happens in the market and sentiment changes, for whatever reason, they'll just as happily, well perhaps not happily, but they'll dump their positions if necessary. Now, even though they've spent quite a bit of money, they'll dump those positions because they know that they may not be able to do this in the future because something's changed. So buying in the accumulation zone, or some people call it accumulating with the accumulators, can be dangerous and you need to be wary. But then once the market breaks out, the higher price goes, the more committed to those positions the professionals will become and they'll support the market. That's why when Wyckoff made his fortune in the early 1900s, he pretty much exclusively invested in stocks that had strength in the background, buying, and had broken out and the markup had begun. And he was back in those stocks in the markup phase. And he would also go short, and if he could see weakness in the background, up here, um, he would wait for the price to break down. This was the breakdown bar there. And then he would invest in stocks on the short side with weakness in the background, which had already broken down and he was backing the markdown phase, you might say. It's much safer. It's probably the least risky position in the stock market. You need to be sure that there's strength or weakness in the background in big liquid markets because that will guarantee you've got active professional speculators in the market and they're the ones who are going to support their positions. And then once price is broken out, sure, you won't get the lowest price available, but in really big markets, they'll be looking to double their money at a minimum. So down here, price was 1750. They would be looking for a minimum price of the $30, $35. And we can have a quick look. $35 and you've got a widespread up bar. That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Why would we see that? Widespread up bar on high volume and then price comes back down to consolidate. You can bet your bottom dollar there was a bit of selling in there. It's up $55. So, Look at, the, look at the background of the chart. No matter whether you're a fundamental buyer and you want to invest in something for the medium term, it's no good coming up with a great fundamental theory here and then allow yourself to be put under all this pressure. Wait until you see some form of strength in the background and then look to buy on your fundamental investment. Uh, this is just making it harder for yourself and you get a better price to start with. You can buy the breakout or if you must, you can buy the, you can buy the accumulation. But coming up with a great idea and then investing immediately and then finding yourself under pressure is just making things difficult for yourself. And you'll find a trend like this 
once established, once a positive influence is established, which will then develop into an uptrend, the uptrend will continue for quite a long time and it all begins with buying in the background like this. And it will continue until there's a significant buying and selling event again. So if you're looking at buying in the background, when there's a significant selling event, that's when the trend may change again. But it, and they can be minor or major. And you have to work that out for yourself as you go along. You can see up here it was a fairly minor event, but it established a, a negative sentiment and a negative downtrend developed from that until it price moved down until we can see this buying event down here, which then changed the background to positive, to strong, with buying in the background. With a strong background, you expect price to establish a positive influence and therefore in time an uptrend will develop. Uptrend of it is really uh, by the dips nature in the market. Whenever price dips lower, you find buyers will step up and support the market because they're ready to buy the dips. Buy the dips is a market with a positive influence or an uptrend in position. And exactly the opposite happens in a downtrend. When you've got a negative influence in the market, you've got sellers waiting to sell. They don't want to sell as price is getting lower. So when price moves higher, they're happy to move in. Well, not happy, not happy, but they'll move in and sell their investment at the higher price. Okay, hopefully now you've got some understanding of the background of a chart and how important it is, especially if you're a, a trader, but it makes some difference for investing as well. If you're, a, if you're a fundamental investor, having a little understanding of market dynamics is going to be an advantage for you. Okay, hopefully that was worthwhile. Thanks for joining me. See ya.